Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to everyone that is listening. God is truly awesome and he is powerful. And uh just want to join to say how good God is. I heard this song Sister Felicia just sang a while ago and it's very powerful. Chew it all. We have to learn to trust. Even when we can't see it coming through. As Sister Veronica being going through a lot and sometimes we question God. And sometimes we have to go back and we have to say, you know what? God knows better. You know, because he knows the beginning from the end. And some circumstances we can't understand. We can't comprehend. But God knows it all. And we are trusting him. And we believe in him and knowing that he will work things out accordingly. So again, I just want to say welcome. I want to welcome all the first-time callers calling from different countries around the world. We want to just say happy Sabbath also for all the Ajax people, our home church calling in and all those who are calling in from the Ruth Church and, and Philadelphia, T. West. You know it. There's a lot of churches calling in from Florida, um, from Jamaica, White Waters, all these church from Spanish Town. There's people calling in from around the globe. And we are just so grateful and happy to have you as we fellowship. It has been a trying week. The Lord has been really good. There's always much more to do. Never enough time. Always much more to do. Praise God, this week we may not have an interview, but the Lord just gave me a word, and I want to get right into the word because it's a word of encouragement to God's people who are going through the boat has been rocked back and forth, to and fro, and God's people need strength in these last days, more strength to endure. No matter what you're going through, we serve a mighty, mighty, mighty God. And through his power, we are overcomers. So, tonight, um, I'm going to open with a prayer and I'm going to go right into the word. And then, if we have any time at the end of the service, I will take uh, entertain two or three questions. Uh, it's a long weekend and we know that you know, we can fellowship a little bit longer with the Lord and the Lord will give us the strength of endurance. Um, when I was asking the Lord, the Lord was showing me that I need to speak concerning his power and authority and also um, enduring and be persistent in prayer and knowing the enemy whom we are fighting against. We have to know whom we fight. And also the confidence in God that we are to have. Because when we have this confidence, it means that we have power and authority. That will come. If you are not sure whom you serve, then we shouldn't even be going to church. If we have the confidence that Christ has the power, then that power will be poured out upon his people when we really need it to carry forth the work of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, great King Almighty, we come to you because we love you, because we care for you, Lord, and you care for us. And Lord, we come through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we ask you now for forgiveness of every sin. Touch every heart that is listening around the globe. Link us together in one accord that your power and might will come down tonight and this prayer line. And all those who are, have called in to be delivered by hearing the word of God, it will pierce and souls will be set free tonight because of your power, your authority, and your love. We thank you, praise you, exalt you 
In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. I'm going to 1 Kings chapter 19, and I'll be reading from verses 1 to 4. And then get your pens and pencils out because I'll be going through a lot of scriptures real fast. So you have to write them down tonight. It's powerful. So we all know the story of Elijah and what Elijah did on Mount Carmel, that he killed many false prophets by calling on fire from heaven. It's one of the most powerful uh, power we have seen display in this Old Testament by a prophet, the prophet Elijah. He called fire down, and you know the story. You can go back and read 1 Kings chapter 18 and read about it. The showdown on Mount, Mount Carmel. And after this showdown, and after uh, the rain situation where he prayed and rain came, Elijah was on a high. He had seen the power of God defeated all the, the false prophets. He had seen drought. He had seen rain. He had seen many things. And now a moment came when he had to be consistent and endure. And in this moment, when he needs to endure, there was a crisis. Go with me to verse 1. And it says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and withal how he had slain all the prophet with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I made, make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. There was a powerful threat by the powerful woman Jezebel. Just our name alone denounced evil, rebel, wickedness. You heard about the Jezebel spirit. You see, a lot of people have the Jezebel spirit. That the enemy has departed upon God's people. And we don't understand the power behind the Jezebel spirit. This woman decided, I'm going to take matters in my own hand. Before she repented and said, you know what? If that happened, that powerful miracle, I want to give my life to Jesus. Instead, she sent a threatening message that by tomorrow this time, you'd be dead. And it says in verse 3, and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father. Lord of mercy. The man of God running away. Tonight, God wants to talk to us about the power of endurance. The power of keeping on when God's people need to be persistent and keep pressing. 
a day when we're going to be challenged. Imagine a man of God, Elijah, seeing powerful operation happening. And now he's running away from a woman, Jezebel. Where is God? How can we relate it to ourselves? Is there something you are running away from? Is it fear? What is it? Are you running away from the home? Is it the job? Is it God's work? God is calling you over and over and you kept running away and is bidding you to come and surrender. I want to tell you that when I, I take a full observation of the power of Elijah and he was running and God is saying many of his people are running tonight from him because of fear. Well, God has given me something to encourage us tonight not to run. You feel like giving up. You felt like you had enough. I can't take this Christian walk any longer. I think I had enough. You're on the edge of throwing in everything and say enough is enough, like Elijah. It also shows that no matter how you have your high, the enemy will come and knock you down. And that's why the word says the righteous fall seven times and get up. God is encouraging us tonight to get up. I want you to go with me to 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. God is going to show us some powerful things tonight. Write the scriptures down and go and study them. So I want to tell you here then, he talks about the Christian must endure hardship. The Christian must endure some pain if we're going to make it over to the promised land. The Christian cannot run away like Elijah, even though Elijah knew where he was coming from. He had a relationship with God. He experienced the power of God. I know you experienced the power. Why are you running away? Why are you turning your back on the Lord? In, in 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, it says, I'm going to read from verse 2. No, verse 3. Verse 3 and 4 I will read. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Lord of mercy. The Lord has chosen some people, Sister Veronica. He has chosen you and many others on the prayer line to be a soldier. And if he has chosen us to be a soldier, he's saying one of the criteria, something we ought to do is to endure hardship. He's saying hardship is going to come and the Christian and he's encouraging us to endure it. Stay put and turn it over to the Lord. That's what he's saying. And he said, don't be like Elijah. Seeing the power of God work today, but tomorrow run from a woman. A feeble woman who named Jezebel, who is wicked. When you know whom you serve, the powerful I am, who is the I am. It doesn't matter if it was Ahab, if it was a man or a woman, but they are feeble. They have no power to go up against the God whom we serve. And God is encouraging us tonight is to en endure 
the hardship you're going through because it's for a purpose. Endure because the Lord has chosen you, Sister Rochester. And if you are a soldier, it means you're going to go through something, Sister Celeste. And he's going to take you through it as the soldier of the Lord. We are in the Lord's army. We're going to be knocked down. But we're not staying down. We're going to get up. The second thing the Lord shows me is that we have to be persistent. We can't give up. It doesn't matter how Jezebel is coming or Ahab is coming. We cannot give up. I want you to go with me to Psalms 18. Psalms 18 verse 37. God is saying, don't stop. He said in verse 37, I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. God is teaching us the spirit of persistent. So as a soldier, we have to endure hardship. And we have to press towards the mark. He's saying, don't be like Elijah in that situation where it becomes overwhelming and we throw down everything and say, I'm ready to die when there's work to do for the Lord. The Lord is saying, endure. God is saying, pursue. Don't stop until prior defeat the enemy who is coming up against you. God is saying tonight you need to go in your war room. You know the movie, the war room. Go into your prior closet and don't come out. Pray and, 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 and be consistent and go to the Lord in prayer. Write your request and paste it on the walls. In your prayer room. Place the request on the walls in the prayer room. In your war room, God is saying, if we are going to make it, we need to endure. We need to be persistent. Power. Don't stop until the enemy of God is being defeated. God is saying also, the third point is that we need to know whom we are fighting against. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. It's not your child who is hooked on crack cocaine. It's not your little son who is addicted to pornography. It's not him. God is saying we have to recognize that this is war. We have to know whom we're really fighting against. And I think the Christendom, we don't understand. We love to take people on and don't understand the power of Jesus Christ. We don't understand the power that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. It's against principalities. So God is saying we ought to know. So I want you to go to 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. We have to know our enemy. If we don't know him, he said, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. If you pretend like you're ignorant and walk into different things without pre preparation, the enemy will destroy you. If you open doors that are not supposed to be open, you are going to be destroyed. A lot of people are going through a lot of warfare and they are doing a lot of ritual. 
A lot of people are using water to throw around their houses and say water will cease the power of darkness. Some people using blue. Some people using inch measure. Some people using harsh shoe. Some people using frankincense and marrow. Thinking that can stop the enemy. We are ignorant. We have no idea of his devices. We have no idea that we are digging a hole so the enemy will get an advantage of us. God is saying when we endure and be persistent, we need to know who the enemy really is. If we don't know who the enemy is, how are we going to fight? How are you going to grab and, and go deeper in prayer when you don't know who you're fighting? You see, God continues to tell us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But every time something happens to us, we think it's flesh and blood. And God is saying you wrestle not against flesh and blood. You wrestle against unseen beings, principalities, powers. So if we are wrestling with unseen beings, why we try to fight? Why not go in fasting and prayer? Why not come to the mercy seat and cry out for the Lord's help? Why not? Why go and just cry and, and get ourselves in trouble? Why not go to the mercy seat and ask the Lord for help? Why not, brethren? Why not come to Jesus who is able? Why not? Why be like Elijah in that situation and running away from God? Tonight you may be going through something and you have been running. The Lord has been speaking to you and telling you and bidding you to come higher so he can use you to eliminate the situation. But what we're doing, we're running away from God. How can we run from God? How can we run after Elijah seeing all that power? Why not stand and face the enemy? We got to face the enemy. We got to endure. We got to stand firm on the word of God. We have to be persistent in prayer and claiming the word of God. We have to know the weaknesses of the enemy. One of the weaknesses of the enemy is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When we call on the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there's power. You see, when you call, if you just said in Jesus' name, it carries some power. But when you say Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it's one Jesus that came from Nazareth. The devil recognized who is that right away. And he flees. God is saying his people need to come to battle and claim the power and authority that is rightfully given. And he's saying, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We know him already. We know his tricks. How can the devil have an advantage over us? When you know him, you know when he's playing tricks on you. You're in this business for a long time. God is calling us out tonight. I want you to go to Psalms 140. 140. The fourth thing is confidence in God. A lot of people lack confidence. You think if Elijah had the confidence in God, he would have run away. You see, if the enemy start to pry open and bring in doubt and fear, the confidence will start to be destroyed. God is calling us 
to be confident in him. Confidence in the Lord. Psalms 140 verse 7 says, O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. He's saying in battle, when I go through what I'm going through, God already have my back. That's pretty much what he's saying. If I'm going through a hardship, have no jobs, things are falling apart, if you believe that God have your back, confidence alone will defeat the enemy. If you have that trust in God, that even through my hardship, he's there and he's going to see me through, there's no room for the devil to destroy you. I'm going to quickly go through some things because the Lord showed me that the confidence level is a major problem for God's people. Major. And I'm going to read some scriptures that the Lord has given his people when they are down. I want you to go with me to First Chronicles 28, verse 20. David said to Solomon, read it. First Chronicles 28, verse, what I said, verse 20. And it says, and David said unto Solomon, his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finish all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Very powerful. David encourages his son that God is not going to give up on you no matter what you're going through. He's going to finish the work. God, this verse is so powerful. Underline it. That's a whole sermon. David encourages his son. We're talking about the confidence level. Look at the same 1 Corinthians 15. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. So back up to 1 Corinthians 15. And we're going to go to verse. We're finding them the same time. God is doing a work here. Verse. Um, I don't. I think I had the wrong one here. First Corinthians fifteen, and what the Lord was showing me is that let nothing move you. I know I'm going to find that scripture because it's very, very powerful. Let nothing move God's people. Let nothing move you. So, sorry, it's not Chronicles. First Corinthians. Sorry about that. First Corinthians 15. He encourages you. When he says, let nothing move you. I have to find this scripture because it's very powerful. It's an encouragement. When he says, let nothing move you. He's talking about anything that you're going through. Doesn't matter. So 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 58. It says. Therefore my beloved brethren. Be he steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding. 
in the work of the Lord. For as much as he know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. What a power. What a powerhouse of encouragement to remain confident in God. Let nothing, you must be steadfast and be unmovable. Underline those two words. Steadfast and movable in the Lord, the work of the Lord. That's what brings the confidence. When you know whom you serve and nothing can move you, we're going to go deeper. I want you to go over to Deuteronomy. Write down these scriptures, brethren. The Lord showed me these things, and they are powerful. Go to Deuteronomy 31. Verse 6 to 8. 31, verse 6 to 8. Let's hear what it says. As the Lord is teaching us, don't be like Elijah. It says, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. It doesn't matter what you're going through. For the Lord thy God, he is, he, it is. That doeth go with thee. Is God going with you? You have that confidence? And he will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee. Underline not fail thee. Nor forsake thee. If God is not going to fail you. Why are you running away? Why are you pulling out Elijah? Why are you, the Lord is calling you over and over and you're running? Why are you saying it burden is too much? You cannot take it. Lord, take my life. He said he will not fail you. Can you have that confidence tonight that the Lord will not fail you? It's so powerful. He will not fail you, brethren. Go to Ephesians. 6 verse 10 that's the familiar scripture we all know Ephesians 6 verse 10 you see God is saying to his people I'm there Ephesians 6 verse 10 says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might He's saying on your Christian journey, don't you recognize that I'm about to come? Finally, brethren, he said, when you get everything together, when everything is put together, he said, finally, the grand finale, be strong in the Lord. It's not you. And in the power of his might, it's not you who's going to fight the battle. He said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you are be strong tonight, that will boost up your confidence level. You can't run away like Elijah anymore. It doesn't matter what pain comes and what threat comes. You are going to stand. Because he said, be strong in the Lord. God wants to encourage us tonight to be strong. I want you to go to Psalms 27. We're winding down. Psalms 27. This is a powerful psalm. I want you to go to it. God is doing a work. God is calling his people tonight. I don't know where you're calling from tonight. You want to be encouraged that whatever you're going through, he loves you. Go to Psalms 27. And I'll be reading in your hearing. Verse 1 first. We're talking about have confidence in the Lord. It says. The Lord is my light. And my salvation. If God is our light. It means that he's going to lead us. He will not lead us into darkness. He will lead us in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. He is the light. He is the light of our 
heart, our life. When we walk, we walk in him. We imitate him. He is the light. He is my everything. And he says that also, he is my salvation. He has given us the free gift. It's already ours. To look forward to the great hope in Christ Jesus when he comes. He already made the provision. He's telling us that when we walk in him now, we're walking in his righteousness and we will be saved. Is there any more assurance you want? Can you worry about the job you don't have and the hardship you're going through and what your friends and family are going through? When God already given us the verdict, the end we know already, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Heaven is there for us to claim. Only we can turn away. The gift is free. Only we can turn away. God is saying tonight, are you gaining some confidence in me? Go look at verse 14. Same verse 27. Go to verse 14 and hear what it says. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Don't get down and depressed because things not working out for you. Don't you know that this world is not our home? We're just passing through. Do you really recognize that? Are you prefer to gather things down here? Do you prefer that? Do you prefer that? I know I talked to one individual, and the individual says, where is God? And I said to the individual, don't you know, God will tell you when you go to heaven, everything. And she says, why should I wait until I get to heaven? It's because she's not getting a glimpse of the promise. If we are wrapped up in emotion and what goes on down here, We can't understand spiritual things. It passes over our head. If we recognize that this suffering is temporal, then if we recognize that, it's a piece of cake. It's a breeze through. If we recognize that we are only passing through temporal and certain things may happen to us, But the enemy can only affect the body, but he can't affect the soul. If we have this confidence in the promises in the word, trust me, it's a different outlook with God's people. We walk around with our heads high because it's not about this world and the temporal and and all the pride of this world. A lot of people are full of pride. It's all about them and it's all about the world. Lord of mercy. There's a day coming, brethren. There's a day coming, but for the Christian who wait on the Lord, for the Christian who don't run away, even though Elijah ran away, he was encouraged by the angel and he came back. You see, sometimes we need to encourage each other. God is saying, I love you tonight. I want you to be encouraged because I love you. I have a plan for you. I'm going to use, you read the last verse. It's Psalms 23. Very powerful. The last verse of confidence that we need to stand with the Lord. I'll read just verse 1 to 4. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Do you have that confidence that the shepherd will feed you if you're hungry? But if you don't know the shepherd, if he's not your shepherd, if in the spiritual realm you can't get it, then you're going to murmur anyway. Even if you hear this message, you're going to murmur and get up complaining the same. But if you really know God, that he is your shepherd, 
He already told you that if one is gone from the flock, he will go and he will leave the 99 and go get the one. That's how much he loves you and I. It's deep, you see. He's telling us tonight that I am your shepherd. Therefore, I shall not want. In verse 2, it says, he maketh me to lie down in green plastic. He leadeth me beside the still water. God is saying, if I'm your shepherd, your bread and water will be sure. In the grass field that you lie down, the grass of good jobs, the grass of good work and good health, the green grass around you, I will make you comfortable and lie down in green pastures. And then he said, I will lead you beside the still water, the water of life, the water that will quench your thirst, the water that will change your life forever. Because he said, I am the living water of life. If you drink of me, you will thirst no more. That's a special water. Only God knows where that water is because it's a still water. It's fresh, but it's not moving. God is saying, I am that water. Only me can take you into that pathway tonight. If you only allow me to. This is spiritually deep, brethren. And in verse 3, he says, I am also the restoration God. He says, he restored my soul. Lord of mercy. Restoration. We need restoration tonight. Tonight, somebody needs to be restored to the master. Somebody needs to turn around like Elijah and get out of the wilderness and get back to Jesus. Tonight, somebody needs an experience with God. If you need an experience, God is calling you tonight before it's too late and said, I want to give you an experience. I want to give you an Elijah experience. He said, I will bring restoration. You are broken tonight because of all the molestation, the maladies. You are broken tonight because of the pain you have been through. God is saying, I'm the God of restoration. You see, where the God of restoration said he will lead you. He said, I will restore it, my soul. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If we are called by his name, everywhere he take us, there's going to be restoration. Everywhere he leads us, if we are called by his name, it meant that everything we do, we have to put it to Jesus. You pray about everything. Even when you go to the supermarket, you pray about it. What you're going to buy. He promised that wherever he leads you in the parts of righteousness, it will bring restoration. Do you want to be restored tonight? God is encouraging you tonight that I'm going to restore somebody on the line. You know why? For his name's sake. If we are called by his name, we can't fail. That has to encourage you. If you are called a Christian, Christ followers, you can't be a loser. You're a winner in everything. If you have that confidence in God. I read the last verse. All of them is powerful, but I'll read verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know why? If you look at verse 3, the restoration and where he's going to take you in the spiritual walk with God, you can't fear anything. You can't fear darkness. 
You can't fear the devil. You can't fear the power of God when he calls you to work because you are covered. He, you got to get it again, brethren. This is powerful. The Holy Spirit showing me this thing. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? I know the line coming after is powerful, but God wants us to go back up to verse 3. Because God is bringing restoration and is leading us because we are called Christians for his name's sake. We represent him. We are hearers. We represent. Therefore, we are called by his name. We are not ordinary. When people see us, we can't be downtrodden and be down and be in depression. He comes to bring restoration. And if we are restored, when we go through our darkness, we will not evil fear no evil. For thou art with me. The Lord says he's going to be with you. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. His protection of the rod and the staff over you. His armor over you. According to Psalms 91, he covers us under his wing over us. We are protected. We are under the shadow of the Almighty over us. We are protected. If we are protected, how can we fear? No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. If you go forth tonight with such boldness and confidence in Christ, the warfare thing is a piece of cake, I'm telling you. We are ready to face any battle in endurance, in persistent in prayer, knowing the enemy and facing our battles with confidence that we are overcomers, facing the Jezebel with confidence that we are overcomers. It's so powerful. You can't be the same tonight if you digest this word and allow the Holy Spirit to move to your vein tonight. You can't be the same. Because we are covered and the Lord promised he will lead us into the parts of righteousness for his name's sake. I pray tonight that we will catch this word. Because this word is powerfully fire burning through our bones that God is with us. And if we have that confidence in the word. To Jesus Christ. It's not button to Christ. It's not Patrick. It's Jesus Christ. The words declare it. That if we study and have the confidence in God. We can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens us. Therefore we are ready for battle. We are ready to face the challenges. In closing, I share this testimony, and then I'll take two questions. You know, in the warfare and the battlefield, I've seen the power of God work, and I've proved it over and over. Sometimes we pray for people, and I become discouraged when they are not delivered. And then the next day, a deliverance comes so powerful that I'm saying, Lord, you're truly with us. I've seen the hands of God move and work with might. And if the hands of God move with such power, how can we deny it? I've seen him move. I've seen deliverance before my eyes many times. I am determined to go all the way with Christ. I don't care what may come. I will not run away in Jesus' name like Elijah. If I have to go to the first death, let it be. How I said, Lord, don't let me receive the second death. I want to be in heaven with you when you come. 
I know that is your desire tonight to be with the Lord and Savior. God is moving on your heart tonight. He can come in and give you such confidence. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to take just two questions. Father in heaven, great God, we thank you for the word, Lord. We thank you that you are with us. We thank you, O oh God, that you have given me what you want your people to hear. Because the days are evil days. Time is running up. God's people need to repent and to come to the mercy seat before it's too late. I pray, O oh God, that somebody who is listening, who have been contemplating coming back to the church and be rebaptized, I pray that they will make the decision. And they will find their nearest Adventist church and recommit their lives to Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the fire and the power. And I give you glory and praise. Hallelujah. To the blood. In Jesus Christ's name. I pray in thanksgiving. Praise God and praise God.